successful musician in the classical repertoire, although also jazz and pop. Um, and he played bass. And on the very first day of first grade at PS11 Queens, Sunnyside Queens, um, now more than 10 years ago, I mean, you know, like uh, 60 years ago, um, 60 is more than 10, right? Yeah. Um, I learned the most important lesson of my life, which is uh, the teacher went around the, the classroom asking everybody what their father did for a living. And one kid's father was a plumber, one, one kid's father was an electrician, this is Queens, and everybody kind of talked like this. And my turn came and I said my father was a musician, and I remember the teacher saying, no, 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 we're not talking about hobbies, we're talking about professions. I, I said, well, my father's a professor, you mean he gets paid to make music? I said, he actually does, yes. So she said, oh, you mean like weddings and bar mitzvahs? I said, well, I don't think he's played any of those gigs in quite a while since he was like a high school kid. He, uh, he, he, he works for NBC. He's with the NBC Symphony, Tos uh, or Symphony Orchestra under Arturo Toscanini, which was a very big thing. Um, you know, there's Sunday night broadcasts in the old radio era, you know, were uh, like the, the hottest item on, on radio. And um, so she was kind of impressed by that. And then she asked me what instrument he plays. And I said, bass. And she said, what's that? What do you mean? And so I explained what the bass was, that it looked like a violin, but it was much, much larger. It stood on the floor and uh, the musician stood behind it. And she said, oh, oh. I know what you're talking about. That's that's called a cello, she said. So I tried to explain the string family to her, uh, the violin, the viola, the cello, and the bass. And um, the reason I knew that wasn't because I was precocious, although I probably was precocious, but it was like the same reason the, the kid whose father was a plumber knew the difference between a hex wrench and a pipe wrench, and the kid whose father was an electrician maybe knew the difference between a voltmeter and an ammeter, I'm just guessing. Um, well, I could see she didn't like that. She said, well, wait a second, it looks like a violin, but it's much bigger than a... She said, that's called a cello. So I said the smartest thing I've ever said in my life. It's been downhill for me since that day in 1950 or 51, whenever it was. Um, I said, oh, okay, it's a cello, but I knew it wasn't a cello. And I knew, uh, more importantly, I knew two things. One, people in positions of authority, they don't know what they're talking about. And what an authority, you know, any, to a kid, a six-year-old, a first grader, uh, on the first day of school, any grown-up is, um, is an adult. I'm sorry, is a, any adult is, a, uh, is an authority. And a teacher is especially an authority, you know, an important authority. So here is... Um, this person of great authority and she doesn't know what she's talking about she's just wrong first of all second of all if you try to enlighten her and and tell her uh, the truth inform her of just simple facts gets mad at you so f from that moment on um i've had a disdain and a kind of disregard for authority and the irony in my life is that now i'm in a position of authority uh, people are afraid to tell me what they thought of a movie because they might get it wrong. I just came from the pool. I'm an obsessive, compulsive swimmer. I swim every day. And I met a, somebody was telling me about a movie they just saw. And I said, um, so how was it? He said, it's, it's interesting. It's certainly something that you ought to see. And I said to him, I don't think you like that movie. I'm, my impression is you didn't like that movie and that you're afraid to say that to me because I'm a professor and I know what, what the good movies are and what the bad movies are. But if somebody says to me, you got to see this movie. Um, oh, what a movie I saw. You know, Okay, but somebody says to me, well, it certainly is an important film to see. And, you know, I just in the inflection of the tone, I can tell that they really didn't like the movie. And I can't imagine anything worse than people having to pretend to like things that they don't, <laughs> they don't really like. And it's been my privilege and my experience over the years, because I travel all around the world, all around North America and all around the world, um, teaching, screenwriting, and giving master classes and lecturing and consulting also with film companies and with uh, national film development corporations and so on of various uh, countries. Um, I, I actually give people permission to admit 
they've been pretending to like certain movies that they really don't like. So, uh, hence, first name basis here. We're trying to debauch our own authority. We want to support our students as best we can, but we cannot tell them what's right and what's wrong. I give a lot of advice to students. I also give advice to faculty and who ask me. And I, uh, Not long ago, a, a teacher came to me and said, um, what are you? And he gave this writer notes, and uh, she just ignored them. She gives it back the new, the new draft, and she hasn't paid any attention to the notes at all. She seems to just reject these notes. And I said to the instructor, I said, you are too invested in this script. I mean, so what? She didn't follow your notes. Uh, she has the right to write as badly as she wants, if indeed that's what it is. And um, uh, you can't have a stake in, in someone's script, you know, I mean, everybody has to go their own way. So that's what we're trying to do here is have some kind of overarching structure, but at the same time to maintain the freedom that artists have to have to, to do their art.